Hello, everyone. So glad you could join us for another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. In today's show, we look at how some of our young people were positively engaged this summer. Plus, as always, we take you on a health and wellness path. There are also tips for getting children ready to learn in the new school year. So stick around for these and more interesting features packed for your enlightenment. If you are experiencing symptoms of the monkeypox virus, including fever, intense headache, swelling of the lymph nodes, back pain, muscle ache, lack of energy, and or a rash on the skin, you must self-isolate immediately and call ahead to your health center or doctor before visiting. The virus may enter the body through broken skin, even if not visible, the respiratory tract, or mucous membranes, eyes, nose, or mouth, and has an incubation period of between 5 and 21 days. The spread of monkeypox may occur when a person comes into close contact with an infected animal, direct contact with monkeypox skin lesions or scabs of an infected person, contact with clothing or linen such as bedding or towels used by an infected person, and the coughing or sneezing of an individual with a monkeypox rash. Wear a mask, frequently wash hands, and practice physical distancing as part of the infection prevention and control efforts. For additional information on monkeypox, visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness website at moh.gov.jm or contact the local public health department. The summer break for our children is ending. As we turn the pages of the magazine, our Western Roundup team highlights how some children were positively engaged during the summer. <laughs> Today on Western Roundup, we highlight the recently concluded Rosemount Gardens Literacy and Numeracy Summer Camp and the Social Development Commission to teach the youth the Summer Camp 2022. The participating students loved it and we know you want to hear all about it, so stick around. Who are the leaders of tomorrow. I can make a difference was the theme for the Tourism Enhancement Fund TEF sponsored literacy and numeracy summer camp held in Rosemount Gardens. The camp, which was designed to improve the youngsters' conflict resolution skills while impacting their education and personal development, was a good break from the norm for the students. The experience at the Summer Camp 2022 was amazing for me personally. I got to meet a lot of people and get closer to a lot of people and have to socialize. We engaged in the making of the graduation caps and the potato race that occurred on the sports day. We did math and spelling. I learned to spell new words and words that I really couldn't get on the top of my head and we got to do simplifying math around my age group. So I learned a lot of that. Thank you a lot and I really appreciate it. I hope we can get this next year and we just, are on behalf of everyone here, thank you. It was excellent because I got to learn a lot of things. I would like to say big thank you to you all. I'm very grateful, especially Miss Powell that is the leader of this, this camp who supports me a lot in everything that I do and I'm really grateful even the workers that are here, they really support me and I'm very grateful for them. I'll say a big thank you to you all. My experience at the camp, I made a lot of friends. One of my best friends now being Serena, she's the other group leader. Yesterday we were on a trip and we were just having fun, laughing and everything. On an event, well, there was a guest speaker, he was a police officer and he came and taught us how to identify a police officer, talking about their badge number, if they had their crown on their hats and their, um, the thing that shows their ranking on their shoulder, you'd find it on their right shoulder. The Rosemount Gardens Citizens Association hosted the initiative with support from the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, mathematics and literacy specialists, guidance counselors and the Rosemount Gardens Moravian Church where the camp was held. 
President of the Association, Deputy Superintendent of Police Yvonne White Powell, says the camp brought about life changing experiences for the participants, adding that there were marked improvements in children's mathematics skills as well as their deportment. So last year, we, when we looked at the children in the community, they were all over the streets. There was no activity in the community for the children. And so the idea of a summer camp was conceptualized. Even with the literacy and the numeracy, because when the assessment was done, uh, the level of literacy was very high, 67%. But the numeracy uh, was not so good. And even with that, there was considerable improvement when we had the math quiz and the spelling quiz, and this, those children participated and they learned. Community members also played a pivotal role in the success of the camp. This is a positive program that will not only foster them or encourage them positively, but will also encourage them in a way that will guide them to the future. Meanwhile, over 500 youngsters from Lilliput, Flanker, Canterbury, Mount Salem, Granville, Retirement, Dumfries, Bogue Hill, Ramble, Mount Horeb and Retrieve in St. James participated in the Social Development Commission's SDC Teach the Youth Summer Camp 2022. The camp, which was staged under the theme Diversion, Development and Empowerment, was aimed at curtailing antisocial behavior among youth. We focus on building self-esteem. We focus on anger management, behavioral change. We focus on career development. So how do children understand positive habits? How do these children understand creating a vision for themselves? What are their values? So we want to shape their values during this period of, of time, as well as we want also to expose them to academic pursuit. For some participating stakeholders, the intervention not only helped to improve antisocial behaviors, but also had other far-reaching impact. It was indeed a very good, very, very good partnership. Tiresome, but good. We had in Canterbury for the first time a group of soldiers walked into the community without guns. Amazing. In fact, the soldiers initially thought that it was a bit risky, but we had a battalion of about 12, 15 soldiers, and they came in the, the community to show the children and the young people a different side of the army. They had no guns, no warlike weapons. And so that in and of itself was an experience for the young people and the children. Some were afraid when they saw the soldiers initially and started crying. But at the end of it, um, they all saw themselves as friends of the soldiers. Participants were taught Spanish, history and civics and were trained in areas such as dining etiquette, Jamaican culture, substance abuse prevention, anger management, behavioral modification, among others. The individual camps were led by the SDC in collaboration with community development committees, the CDCs and other community-based organizations. <laughs> The camp culminated with a fun day, which saw participants from the different communities converging on the SDC playing field for a day of entertainment and frolic. That's all for the program today. As usual, thank you for joining us for Western Roundup, where we take you from the corners of St. Elizabeth to the hilly terrains of St. Anne. Remember to send your feedback to jismove at jis.gov.jm. Until next time, stay safe. We promised a health-wise discussion, and here it is. The topic is oral health. Dental health is 
really important because the mouth is the entry point of nutrition in our bodies. And if it is not functioning properly, then we run the risk of not getting the correct nutrition. Actually, we refer more so to oral health these days than okay. dental health. If we have bad teeth that impair our ability to chew properly, then we will tend to keep away from um, certain food groups that could be challenging to chew. People with bad oral hygiene, um, people who use and eat and drink a lot of sweets, you can mm -hmm. have decay mm -hmm. and you can also have along with it um, periodontal gum disease. You know, the big one that jumped out at me is um, periodontal disease, gum disease. That mm -hmm. is when the gum begin to be bleedy, sore, puffy, and just generally uncomfortable. Um, it carries some social consequences, um, bad breath, and you tend to lose self-confidence. It's so important to have a consultation with your dental personnel, whether the dental surgeon or the hygienist, who will be able to diagnose the needed treatment for such a condition. All sugars are bad, uh, but everything is in moderation. The Jamaica Dental Association endorsed the, um, the efforts of the government in introducing the in reducing the levels of sugar um, in the bottled beverages. Um, the aim is to get it to 2.5 milligrams in 100 mils um, by the year 2023. It would be roughly two, two and a half teaspoonful. The, the current level that the government has aimed for, and it was introduced at um, the end of January, yes. is five milligrams per 100 mils. So that is coming from 6.5, so it's a gradual reduction. And um, the taste will be not so significantly different. As a dentist, I recommend the soft, but I'm aware that a lot of patients um, tend towards the harder ones. It does some damage by cutting a little line at the neck of the teeth, just where the teeth meet the gum line. Um, so we, we recommend the soft toothbrush. It's really important to begin by putting the brush on the gum. A lot of people avoid the gum because they tend to think that it makes the gum bleedy. It's the exact opposite. It is as a result of not brushing the gum why there is some amount of bleediness. And you should brush in the direction of growth. Um, the top ones, you brush them down in a circular motion, and the bottom ones, you brush them up, covering all surfaces. Don't forget your tongue, and um, as I said before, the, the gum itself. Flossing is very, very important. Mm -hmm. If you try to imagine that the toothbrush does not get between the teeth, the only thing that can remove the material that will accumulate between the teeth would be the dental floss. The technique is also important. Hold it short, put it, get it past that little tight area, and mm -hmm. gently bring it down into the gum, that little crevice of the gum, and remove it, remove material that might have accumulated there. And we recommend a um, six monthly checkup. If you have, uh, if you tend to be prone to decays, we would really like to see you every six months. If you have been checked and you are pretty much okay, a yearly visit would be adequate. Extraction really is the last resort. Um, with regular examination, we can pick up using x-rays and visual examination early decays, and these can be effectively um, dealt with by regular fillings. 
Um, if it has gone too far and it is now in the nerve, there are other procedures called root canals that can be done. And um, sometimes we need to cover the entire tooth mm -hmm. with a crown to bring it back to usefulness. If your teeth are malaligned, just not aesthetically pleasing or are causing some kind of um, effect on your body, then they should be straightened. It, orthodontic treatment or braces simply mean moving the teeth through bone to put them in a more harmoniously pleasing position. It's important because you are moving teeth through bone and the harmony between the joint, yes. the soft tissues and the teeth must be respected. Mm -hmm. Not respecting it can result in pain in the joint, headaches, and just a general sense of discomfort in your mouth. It's important to, um, to visit your dentist regularly and without fear because with new technology and we now have many new dentists in our system where it's not difficult to get uh, an appointment to see a dentist on a regular basis. There's always a needle but outside of that there's absolutely no pain. Jamaicans consume on average 9 to 12 grams of sodium or salt per day, twice the World Health Organization recommended amount of less than 5 grams or 1 teaspoon of salt and, more ideally, less than 2 grams of sodium per adult per day from all food sources. This excess salt in the diet causes high blood pressure, kidney and bone damage, gastric cancer, obesity, and worsening of asthma. Reduce the amount of salt you consume to no more than three to five grams or half to one teaspoon per day for adults and less than two grams for children under 11 years of age. Let's shake the salt habit and live healthy. A public service message from the Jamaica Information Service. We're still talking health and this time our focus is not on the mouth but what goes in it. Food, but more specifically, the fats in our food. The human brain is 60% fat. Fats provide a storehouse of energy for the body and promote normal cell growth and healthy skin. Fat also acts like a cushion and heat regulator to protect the heart, liver, and other vital organs. And as most people would know, fat adds flavor to our food and helps us feel full longer. It is clear that having fat in our diet is beneficial in many ways, but too much or the wrong kind can be equally harmful. Fat is a source of essential fatty acids which help the body absorb vitamins A, D and E. There are three types. Monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids are both considered good fats. The third, saturated fatty acid, is what we are often encouraged to avoid or lower our intake. So too, trans fat, which is created by a process called hydrogenation that makes the fat harder at room temperature to increase the shelf life. What is in our foods impact on the quality of our lives? The World Health Organization recommends that trans fat intake be limited to less than 1% of total energy intake which translates to less than 2.2 grams per day with a 2,000 calorie diet. Studies have shown that saturated fat increases the amount of bad cholesterol or LDL in the blood and has no effect on the good cholesterol, HDL. Trans fatty acids increase the amount of bad cholesterol in the blood and also reduce the amount of good cholesterol. Diets high in these bad fats are linked to obesity, heart disease, and other cardiovascular-related problems. Trans fat also causes malformation of cell membranes and other cell structures in the body, leading to weak cell walls and abnormal cell function. 
They are not recognized by enzymes and can cause neural degeneration and diminished brain function. So why then is trans fat used? Well, taste and economics. Trans fat makes food stay fresh on the shelf longer and improves food texture and flavor stability. Based on a 2021 assessment of the fatty acids in commonly consumed foods in Jamaica, our intake is very high. If you look at confectionery, you see how high the percentage is um, there and it, it comes down in several of the other food products. Okay, this is just the percentage that have trans fat. Notice that the canned foods had none at all, or the beverages that we looked at had no trans fat. Okay? Um, but this is just saying whether there was trans fat in the product. What we are even more interested in is which products had high levels of trans fat. In terms of the highest concentrations, more than 2% of fat as trans fat, we see the dairy products and it goes down like that. And then when we now look at those that had the same products that had high saturated fat along with the trans fat, um, we see the figures here. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is looking to change this and encourage better food production and consumption practices. Healthier alternatives can be used that do not affect the taste or the cost of food. Knowing what is in our food is part of the way forward. It is a lifestyle change to come through education, product reformulation, regulation, food labeling, and monitoring. The elimination of industrially produced trans fats is, a, is part of a comprehensive policy package to prevent diet-related NCDs, which comprises mandatory food labeling, ingredients lists, nutrition panels, declaring trans fats interpretive, front of package labeling based on nutrient profiles, restrictions on food marketing aimed at children and adolescents, mandatory standards for healthy food served in schools, and limits on sugar content. It's not just about our resolve to do the right thing to consume what is in our best interest. That in and of itself is a challenge because we have to now nudge, encourage, motivate, and in some instances legislate, I believe, certain types of actions to, to encourage better quality of life from a nutrition consumption standpoint. I think it is essential to advocating in the first instance for voluntary compliance as an immediate response. As consumers, we have the choice of using naturally occurring unhydrogenated vegetable oils such as canola, safflower, sunflower or olive oil. We can also limit red meat and choose lean cuts. It is also recommended that we steam, boil or bake foods instead of cooking them in fats or oils. Another approach is to choose low-fat dairy products, poultry and fish, and purchase processed foods made with unhydrogenated oils rather than partially or hydrogenated vegetable oils or saturated fats. Use soft margarines as a substitute for butter and choose soft margarine over the harder stick forms. Limit consumption of commercially fried foods and baked goods made with shortening or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Not only are these high in fat, but it is also likely to be trans fat. And cut back on foods high in dietary cholesterol. Let's eat healthy and live well. Listen to this. I can send a message. Uh -huh. Disaster do happens. Be prepared. The municipal corporation reminds us of hurricane, earthquake, flooding. You name it. And preparedness. Mommy, we really have to take this thing seriously. 
Primary school, churches, community centers. Know your nearest emergency shelter. Protect your family during any natural disaster. Be prepared. Visit the ODPEM website at odpem.org.jm to find the shelter listing for your parish. Know your emergency shelters. Before we end our journey today, we are leaving you with some tips to spur children's interest in reading and perk up their alertness in the classroom when schools reopen. I'm Chet Davids, teacher of grade six, grade six coordinator. Get them interested in the reading. Because you know, research has shown that over the years, as children get older, the interest and motivation in reading decreases. So as a grade six teacher, what I try to do is to encourage my students to read a wide variety of genres. Sometimes while I'm teaching, what I do is I bring in a little of what I've read in a book into my whole discussion, you know, like a teenager book. And then they will say, Miss, you know that? And I say, yes, because I read all types of books, and therefore you need to read all types of books. I think parents themselves must be readers. Parents must not allow the students to think that reading is a chore. You know, like sometimes when they're doing something bad and the parents say, go take up your book. No, it should be something fun. So they should find fun ways to read together with the children and read to them sometimes as well. And not just reading just one particular material, but a variety of materials so that they know that reading is not just a book. So those are some of the ways in which I try to pique their interest and get them interested in reading. There's a lot more to Jamaica than just what meets the eye. I had always loved art. It was my first love. It set me free. I did some um, artwork for the Half Moon Hotel. And shortly after, 14 guests showed up at my gate thinking I had a gallery up here. And that gave me the idea that I need to have a gallery. And so the guests would come up, they see the garden, ask if they could go for a walk. But everybody came back saying, we should make something of it. It was inspiring and they described it in many ways. When they come here, we give each guest an intro, a, a welcome and a little history about the place before they take the tour. There's one word that they repeat over and over again. Love. They feel love in this place. One guest we had in the early years was from Germany. And he said, you know, I spent five days on the beach looking up in these hills and just wondered, what was life like up there? And he found us. People who travel want to experience. And this is what we try to offer, an experience. Every guest that leaves this place said, I came here as a guest and I felt like family. Yeah. Come to Jamaica and be our family. We all have a story to tell. Mine is just one of millions that are out there. And they're all good. And this is where we close today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be sure to join us tomorrow for another show. Until then, there is more to watch by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Until next time, take care and keep safe. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.